Hello, I'm Anthony Fulden of Integral HR Solutions. And as many of you know, we work closely with uh, your leadership team, introduce some best in class practices on the HR side of the business. And today the initiative is uh, compliance training. Compliance training, hopefully not because we have to, but we choose to in order to raise awareness. So all employees have an appreciation of, uh, of the regulations uh, under the um, uh, Occupational Health and Safety statute, Statutes, the AODA statute, which is uh, our topic of conversation today, accessibility in, in particular, and any other regulation that falls under uh, the Employment Standards Act in the uh, province of Ontario in this particular case. I'm gonna share my screen with you so you'll have an appreciation of the, uh, the slideshow. So just bear with me as we uh, as we go live with the uh, supporting materials. And as you'll see, um, and my apologies, I got some glaring sunshine coming in through the, uh, the office window, uh, but no complaints in that regard, other than it may wash out the, uh, the screen. Uh, back in 2005, the Ontario government introduced uh, AODA. And on an annual basis, right through to 2025, the regulations are updated and there's certainly compliance from a training, education and awareness standpoint. So during this workshop, we'll talk about the phased in implementation. We'll talk about the customer service standard. We'll talk about the integrated standard and we'll talk about from a human rights perspective and this duty to accommodate. Uh, why are we governed under this, uh, this regulation? Because we employ people and we, uh, employ people and or provide goods and services to the public. Quite simply, the goal is to identify, uh, remove and prevent barriers to persons with disabilities. And, and quite honestly, whether it's employment, whether it's accommodation, um, people with disabilities should not be treated differently. They should have the same access to employment. They should have the same access to employment promotional opportunities within the workplace and certainly within the greater community, whether it be uh, lodgings, buildings, uh, accommodations in general. We have a legal obligation to comply with the standard. Senior leadership must sign off uh, on an annual basis. Failure to comply with the standards could result in, uh, in, in non-compliance penalties up to $100,000 a day. Now you'd have to do something awfully silly or be uh, absolutely naive, but the government reserves the right to introduce such penalties and, and measures. Customer service standard has been in play for a while. It calls for us to establish policies, practices, procedures, uh, providing goods and service to people with disability. And if people with disabilities have their own personal assist assistive devices, then they need to access our organization or to communicate or to convey with us, then obviously the uh, such devices have to be uh, allowed on the premises. And we've got to take every reasonable effort. And I'll talk about this in detail as we go forward, but people that are differently abled, and I'm more comfortable using the term differently able rather than disabled. We have to these core values and principles that relate to independence, dignity, integration, a new equal opportunity should really just become our, our core values. When it comes to the customer service standard, there's an obligation that we, uh, we are in a position to communicate with a person uh, with a disability in a manner that takes into account their particular disability. So whether it's, uh, it's a hearing impairment, whether it's a speech impediment, we have to be able to convey and communicate. We have to be in a position to train staff, whether it's uh, staff, part-time, full-time, contractors, volunteers, people that were associated with our organization so that they have an appreciation of the customer service standard and our obligations to, uh, to do the right thing. And in the event that a person is uh, accompanied by a guide dog or a service animal, we have to um, take all reasonable steps to, uh, to accommodate that request. Now, sometimes when we get into to, 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 uh, areas that include um, contamination and food safety and things of that nature, then obviously we have to take a look at some, uh, some other creative ways to accommodate a person that may be on site with a, uh, a guide dog. But other than that, um, all reasonable steps and precautions must be taken. Anybody that again has a support person that, that is required to, uh, to, to provide service and support 
it's a requirement to, uh, to, to work with them. Also, our policies and procedures have to uh, have a provision if there's any temporary uh, disruption of services. Um, how do we communicate that with pe to people with disabilities? Any feedback, if people are looking to access our policies or ask questions or looking for information as far as uh, uh, practices, standards, policies, procedures, and if they were looking for feedback, we have to be able to provide such feedback in, a, um, in an environment that accommodates their particular needs. Customer service standards uh, that we've uh, addressed also talk about a multi-year plan. Under the regulations, we have to have plans for, for future. As this regulation evolves through to 2025, how we dedicated time, effort, resources to make sure we're compliant. As the customer service standard evolves, it now uh, sees an introduction of what's called an integrated standard. This gets more involved from an employment uh, uh, practice standpoint. And everything we do uh, from an emergency standpoint uh, has to call for an individual emergency evacuation plan. So for clarity, many organizations have safety evacuation plans in the event of a fire, in the event of an explosion. But now we have to take into effect, what happens if we have an employee that's disabled? How do they evacuate the building? Do they have the capacity to do so? Do we need to come up with a plan for a person that has a disability or is differently able? What about our websites? When we brand and when we, um, we promote uh, brochures, information on our websites um, has to be accessible and a particular type of font. So and employees that would look at our website, um, customers, visitors, guests, vendors, uh, potential clients that may look at our website, they have a chance to do so and our website is accessible. Really critical element is hiring practices. How do we accommodate people that have a disability throughout the process? So if I'm differently abled and I'm applying for a job, are there alternate formats to complete a resume or an app application or submit a resume, I should say, and complete an, uh, an application? If there's uh, any type of accommodation that's needed throughout the recruitment selection process, we have to be in a position to convey that and certainly work with the uh, the individuals so we can accommodate their needs. As we talked about a bit earlier, the, uh, the, the policies that relate to respecting the dignity and independence of a person with a disability, we have to be able to integrate our goods and services. So persons with uh, disabilities or that are differently able have access to our goods and services. And these are really the core uh, values that we should be promoting within the organization. Differently able people, we're gonna treat them with dignity. dignity. We're gonna respect their independence. We're gonna integrate our goods and services so they have equal access and ultimately equal opportunity given to, to a person that's differently abled that would be given to a person that, that does not have a disability. And we've um, put together a comprehensive policy and it's posted on the uh, Occupational Health and Safety Bulletin Board. The regs call for the policies to be posted in a conspicuous location. And it just really reinforces our dedication to the, to the provision of service. Whether it's a customer, vendor, anybody we serve uh, that may have a disability, we're gonna respect their, uh, their independence. We're gonna treat them with dignity and respect. And we're providing and committed to providing uh, all forms of accommodation. Under the regs, we have to be able to communicate as we alluded to earlier. So we'll work with staff specifically on the front lines that may interact with, um, with customers and vendors um, that, that would approach our facility that may have a, uh, a disability in relation to, to communication. Telephone services. Uh, there's all kinds of technology today and you take a look at um, how um, uh, converting it to text or text messages back and forth. But if somebody is in a position where they can't communicate and they want to, uh, to have a conversation over the telephone, we have to be able to uh, embrace technology so we can facilitate those discussions. As alluded to a little bit earlier, a little bit broader, somebody has an assistive device that requires them to function, whether I'm an employee, whether I'm a vendor customer, we have to be able to accommodate those assistive devices. Billing. May have somebody on the uh, APAAR side of things as a vendor, and all of a sudden they have a vision impairment and uh, and they can't uh, they can't read effectively our uh, our invoices. We have to come up with some uh, 
innovative and creative strategies, which may be just picking up the phone and walking them through the invoice. It may be putting it in a, uh, in a, in a larger font, maybe converting it to Braille. So this duty to accommodate. Again, service animals support persons. Service animals are not pets. They're to be treated as, a, as service animals. And where it is absolutely feasible, they're allowed in our, uh, in, in our facilities. And we just alluded to a support person quite often. And it's important from a sensitivity standpoint, if we are interacting with an individual that has a, a need to have a support person, we should be interacting with the individual and not the support person, unless we're told otherwise. Training, obviously the, um, this um, tutorial, we will provide additional materials, training materials, and we'll review the policies. So all employees have a, uh, a greater level of awareness and appreciation and an improved level of sensitivity towards interacting with people that are different, differently abled. As we talked about it, the act's being in play. We're certainly from a training standpoint, required to review the act, the regulation, the company policies and procedures how to locate our policies. And as, we, as organizations grow, and certainly um, with over 50 employees, requirements to do a, uh, or to introduce and facilitate uh, broader training that relates to human rights. So we can take that, that in, uh, in, in relation to the human rights code training, we can take that as a, as a separate module. We talked about the emergency response that also has to be built into our training uh, programs and procedures. So really at the, the end of the day, um, the expectation is that all employees uh, are treated with dignity and respect. If an employee becomes disabled in any way, shape or form, then obviously from a privacy confidentiality standpoint, we'll work with the employees to look at how we accommodate and we put such plans together in play. Any interactions with customers, vendors, anybody from a third party, whether it be a client, whether it be someone that just reports to our uh, facility, we have to be in a position to, uh, to identify if there are any opportunities to accommodate and how we will accommodate those, uh, those needs. So there's a, a brief overview of AODA, the Accessibility for Ontarians with Disability Act. Your administrator now is going to introduce a, uh, a brief quiz. Uh, and that quiz will actually confirm understanding of the, uh, the takeaways and again, a policy review. So thank you for your, uh, your time this afternoon and enjoy a uh, terrific day.